Okay, so this will be L4. And that will be ruminant lipids. And for ruminant lipids, something we need to keep in mind is we generally don't feed them a tremendous amount of tag because tags are difficult to digest. difficult for ruminants to digest so typically we keep it tag at less than 5% of the diet okay they have a uh, two sources of lipids that are pretty common in their diets or common in their small intestine the first is glycolipid and glycolipid should make you think of sugars and lipids together and so Glycolipids come from plants, mainly grasses. And what they have is they have a sugar at the SN1 position. So on the glycerol backbone, instead of a fatty acid at SN1, we have a sugar. And then the other um, more common source of lipids and ruminants showing up at the small intestine would be phospholipids. And phospholipids are the primary fat digested and absorbed by ruminants. So it's the primary source of fat would be phospholipids, and their phospholipids are generally going to originate from our good friend, the microbes. And so we'll call this microbial phospholipids. Okay, and these are going to be real similar to microbial crude protein and that the microbes can synthesize their own lipids to make their cell membrane. So this cell membrane is going to be made of phospholipids and the microbes are making them themselves. As a result of this synthesis of microbial phospholipids, we can have negative lipid digestion which means basically there is a net appearance of the nutrient in question. So the amount of lipid increases from the mouth to the small intestine. And this is because the microbes are synthesizing microbial phospholipids, so they're adding to it, they're creating phospholipids, so there's gonna be more lipids that show up at the small intestine than the animal consumed because of the synthesis of microbial phospholipids. Same thing can happen with microbial crude protein if we're recycling a lot of urea to the rumen. We can have negative digestion of protein in that more protein shows up at the small intestine than the cow consumed with their mouth. So keep negative digestion in mind as it pertains to both microbial phospholipids and microbial crude protein. Okay, so ruminant utilization of lipids. Ruminant utilization of lipids is basically gonna happen in three steps. The first step is hydrolysis of glycerol
plus of glycerol and fatty acids. We're going to break all of the glycerol apart from all of the fatty acids. Something to keep in mind about this step, it is rapid and complete. Okay, the microbes are gonna be very effective at hydrolyzing fatty acids away from uh, glycerol. So for tag, what we end up with is a glycerol plus three fatty acids. The enzyme that does this is lipase. For glycolipids, we're going to end up with a glycerol plus two fatty acids plus a sugar. Okay, the enzyme that does this is galactolipase. And then for phospholipids, we have phospholipase, which is going to make a glycerol plus two fatty acids plus a polar hydrate. enzyme that does this, as I said, is phospholipase. Phospholipase. Okay, now the key thing is all three of these enzymes are of microbial origin. So they are microbial or bacterial enzymes because this process is happening in the rumen. Okay. And as a result of this process happening in the rumen, the glycerols and the sugar, so glycerol and sugar, are fermented to VFAs. Okay, the second step is hydrogenation. And so you might be familiar with hydrogenation because sometimes we talk about like partially hydrogenated oil. And so hydrogenation is the addition of hydrogen to an unsaturated fatty acid. So two is hydrogenation. And what hydrogenation is, is we take an unsaturated fatty acid, so UFA, and we saturate it by adding hydrogens. So we're adding protons to it. The enzyme that does this is again of microbial origin, and that enzyme is hydrogenase. Okay, and this process is slow and incomplete. So when the step in front of it is fat or rapid and complete, and this is slow and incomplete, means there's an accumulation of unsaturated fatty acids. Okay, what it ends up is also about 90% of unsaturated fatty acids are converted to or hydrogenated to saturated fatty acids. Okay, a couple things about why microbes do this. First of all, UFA, unsaturated fatty acids, are toxic to ruminal microbes. especially fiber degrading 
bacteria. And basically what happens is the unsaturated fatty acids, because they um, can enter the membrane, will disrupt it. They make it too fluid, and the bacteria have problems dealing with that, and they use ATP to correct for that, and then they essentially die. A positive thing about unsaturated fatty acids is unsaturated fatty acids, UFA, act as a hydrogen sink. Okay, and so they're accepting hydrogens. which decreases methane production. Okay, and so that's a positive. That reminds us of propionate, what propionate does for carbohydrates is it accepts hydrogen, so that acts as a uh, hydrogen sink and decreases methane production. So unsaturated fatty acids decrease methane production in two ways. The first way, is they kill fiber degrading bacteria and we know that fiber degrading bacteria produce more acetate you produce more acetate you get more methane right you have to remember that table um, where it talked about how many methanes we get per acetate produced so we're killing the fiber degrading bacteria which decreases acetate production decreases methane production the other thing we're doing is we have hydrogen sink which accepts hydrogens which also decreases methane production Third, we then have microbial phospholipid synthesis. And so this is them synthesizing microbial phospholipid. Okay, and so what we have now is microbial phospholipid and we have a lot of saturated fatty acids. Okay, because they're not necessarily gonna use these saturated fatty acids to make their microbial phospholipids, they'll make new ones. New fatty acids, they'll use some, but they'll make generally new ones. So we really have two fats. We have, so we'll write down here the result. Um, this is the result of, result of ruminal utilization of lipids. Oh, sorry, I caught it pretty fast though. So the result of ruminal utilization of lipids is we have primarily saturated fatty acids. And these saturated fatty acids are free saturated fatty acids. So what's going to happen to them is they're going to be ad, so that's a D, so they are adsorbed to feed particles. Okay, so they're not inside the feed particle, they're basically stuck on the outside. Okay, and so that's important to keep in mind. The saturated fatty acids are basically going to stick to the feed particle to try to minimize the interaction with the water in the rumen environment. The rumen is primarily water, and so the saturated fatty acids adsorb to the feed particles to um, prevent them from having to interact with water. The other thing we have is microbial phospholipid. Okay? So this microbial phospholipid and the saturated fatty acids are going to move out of the reticular rumen, go to the abomasum, and then to the small intestine. Okay, in the small intestine, in the small intestine, we have desorption. desorption of saturated fatty acids from feed particles and this is caused by lysolethicin L-Y-S-O 
less than L E C I T H I N. And lysolethacin is made in the liver. And stored, stored, it's terrible. And the gallbladder. Okay, and so the fatty acids are now, the saturated fatty acids or primarily saturated fatty acids are freed from the uh, feed particle. And now we're gonna talk about the micelle or the fat droplet in the small intestine. And so it's gonna look different from the micelle that we drew um, for the pig. And so this is something that you want to think about is how they're different and why they're different. So if we draw a fat droplet or micelle for a non-ruminant, and so this is in the small intestine, remember? So we're going to coat that, or we're going to first start by drawing it, and it's going to look like this, with the green part being bile. It's a terrible circle. And then on the outside, we're going to have colipase and colipase's friend, phospholipase. And inside of this micelle, we're going to have predominantly tag, right? Because pancreatic lipase is going to do most of the digestion of tag in the small intestine. What we'll also have as well, though, because of the activity of lingual lipase, and gastric lipase is a few DAGs and free fatty acids. Okay. Draw the same thing, but this time for a ruminant. Ruminant. And so again, we're going to have bile. John, do I have butter circle? The way I have it set up here is not good for me, but hopefully it's not permanent. Well, it's not permanent because if I have to do this for much longer, I'll buy a desk. Okay, so this is our ruminant micelle. And so we again have it surrounded by, um, we have it surrounded by bile, but what we're gonna have primarily in it is microbial phospholipid because that's the primary source of fatty acids at this point and the other thing we're going to have is if we did feed them any fatty acids they will be present as saturated fatty acids Okay, and those saturated fatty acids are going to be associated with lysolethacin. So we'll make it look like that, a little squiggly line, and that equals lysolethacin. And so it's in here, and it desorbed the saturated fatty acids from the feed particles. Okay? And so it is really important, sorry, I didn't mean to drop that. It's really important that you guys know the differences between um, ruminant or non-ruminant and ruminant fat droplets. And why, why there are saturated fatty acids in here. You feed them the same fat, you feed them a highly unsaturated fat, 
our little pig can absorb unsaturated fats because they're still present in the tank, whereas the microbes have taken those unsaturated fats, broken them off the glycerol, and made saturated fatty acids of them. Okay, some general effects of adding lipid to the diet of ruminants. We say lipid, we mean tag. So tag added to ruminant diet. Okay, we're gonna do two things, or three things. They're all kind of related, so it's really one thing. We're gonna decrease structural carbohydrate digestion. And there's two reasons that's gonna happen. A is the unsaturated fatty acids kill They kill structural carbohydrate utilizing microbes. And B, saturated fatty acids adsorb to fiber or structural carbohydrates, decreasing digestion. Okay, we're gonna decrease methane. We're gonna decrease methane production, again, for two reasons. The first reason is unsaturated fatty acids act as a hydrogen sink. B, we have a decrease in structural carbohydrate digestion, which is the result of decreasing acetate, which decreases methane. Okay, and the last thing we see is a decrease in the acetate to propionate ratio. And that's basically for the above reason because we have a decrease in structural carbohydrate digestion. Okay, when you decrease structural carbohydrates, you decrease acetate. So these effects, these three effects, are dependent on the amount. And type. of lipid fed. It's a terrible fed. Fed. Okay, so if you feed at less than 5% tag, no effects. The other thing is PUFA, polyunsaturated fatty acids, trigger greater effects because they're more unsaturated so they're more disruptive to the membranes of the structural carbohydrate fermenting bacteria. The other thing to note, and this will seem somewhat familiar based on the test you guys took a while back, to provide essential fatty acids to ruminants you need to protect 
protect. You need to protect that's from bio hydrogenation in the rumen. Okay, so this will seem a little fuzzy what we went over today or in this video. Will seem a little fuzzy until you watch the cow video and the absorption of lipids out of the cow. One other thing that I want to really draw to your attention is these three steps that are occurring in the rumen also occur in the large intestine. So if any or cecum large intestine cecum if any fat remains these processes are going to occur in the large intestine, especially the last, the synthesis of microbial lipid. And you can really think about that in terms of if I have microbial good protein production, I have microbial phospholipid synthesis. And they, they mirror each other, they follow each other all the time, okay? Because they're related, they're part of the microbe. Okay? So, y'all have a good day.